And what do we have here? They're multiplying. So this one I recently picked up from a friend. We're not going to be keeping it. We're just going to go through, make sure everything's right on it, do a tune-up on it. Right now there's no battery in it. I went and bought a new battery yesterday. We're going to take the deck off of it, change the blades, change the belt, make sure everything is level. I think it has a parasitic power draw somewhere, so we're possibly going to go through and figure out where that might be. And then we're going to post it up for sale. We're going to pressure wash it and make sure it's all nice and clean. So we're going to get started with putting a new battery in and we're going to test and see if there is indeed a parasitic power draw. We're also going to change the ignition switch right there because it is a known issue. So we have the battery installed and the positive terminal is connected. The first thing we want to do is get our multimeter here. We don't want AC, we want DC volts. This is a 12 volt battery, so I want to change it to the 20 setting right there. And then what we are going to do is we're just gonna connect the two terminals. We'll just do one Let me show you guys a little trick for this because I've only got two hands. So all that I'm going to do is tighten this up in here. That's going to hold that. Can you see that? So the ignition switch is in the off position. And so whenever I touch right here, then we should get a reading of zero volts that's reading 1.45 volts so we do have a parasitic draw somewhere like i said i know that the ignition switch is a known issue so we are going to start with that i've got a new one we're just going to pop it in real quick so you guys will be able to see me from up here Starting here in the back side, we have that electrical connector, and then the switch looks like it's held in by just a couple of tangs. This, this is going to be really hard to video, and so whenever I get it out, I will show you guys an exploded view of it, but right now I'm just going to fudge around under here and see if I can get the thing loose. like we've got two little plastic clips well that's actually not that bad at all so the ignition switch is really held in by not too much the electrical connector isn't held in with any sort of clips or anything at all it's just press fit and then the switch itself is held in just with these two plastic tabs so let's go ahead and get this new one on there and we will test the voltage again one thing you always want to check whenever you're switching your ignition switch is to make sure that you have the same switch and so we'll compare the two side by side so the pins look the same and if you can read in there we have ground start M, can't remember what that stands for off of the top of my head. Battery, accessory one and accessory two. We'll compare it to this one. Ground, there's load right in the middle. Start, M, battery, accessory two and accessory one. So this is the same switch. Let's go ahead and get it popped in there. Just toss that old one in the seat. 
it's starting to rain, so I need to hurry. So that just plops down in there. And then here on the back side, Multimeter again. Set it to range. And then let's see what we get now. We're currently reading zero. Should be reading zero. We still have a draw somewhere. Nope. There we go. Make sure I've got a good connection. Yeah, so we still have a draw somewhere. So let's keep moving on down the line. I think the next thing I'm going to test is the voltage regulator because it's pretty easy to unhook. So this is a Briggs 17 and a half horsepower engine, pretty standard on all the D105 mowers after serial number 2001 anyway. And here we have the voltage regulator. It's just this little square deal that attaches to the side of the engine case. When those go bad, they short out internally and cause a constant draw. So coming out of it, we have yellow and red, and those just tie in right here. So I'm gonna unhook these real quick, see if I can do it one-handed. Let's see, the twist lock. Little pry tabs. So you can see how those are held on there, two little tabs and a retaining ring. So I'm gonna need both hands to do this. Now we've got that disconnected. So let's just go back up to the top again and test our voltage. They say third time's a charm, right? Let's hope that's true here. Hold that up for y'all to see again. And there we go. Touching the terminal. And we're reading 0.2 volts. That's within the margin of error. If I were to sit here long enough and the batteries on my multimeter may be running down too. I mean, that is minuscule so we have a bad voltage regulator and all of the John Deere shops are closed today so I guess we will continue on in a later episode and try to figure out <laughs> how to change that voltage regulator we may try to get it off of here today before it rains it's about to rain so Stick with me, we'll get that regulator off of there. And tomorrow you'll get to see me go to the John Deere shop. So we need to get that little voltage regulator off of there. And the way we do it, if you kind of look around there in that mess of wires, there's not really anything holding it on except for one bolt in the center. And that also happens to be the ground going into the engine so we're gonna get in there take that little guy loose and I'll show you where it goes and show you a trick for here let's see here bear with me my poor camera ing skills Definitely a coarse thread bolt. That should be loose enough to get with our fingers. Yeah. So we'll take that off of there. That is a very coarse thread bolt. Look at that, guys. It's just going straight into plastic. Let's get that regulator out of there. Just a two wire regulator. And what I want to do, 
so I don't forget where the bolts and nuts and screws go. I'm just going to put that right back there in that hole. We'll just do it finger tight. Take this out. And that is a Briggs and Stratton voltage regulator. And it is shorted out inside. Which is causing it to ground and make a connection in the circuit through the, the ground whenever it should have none. So we'll go to John Deere tomorrow. We'll get another one of these. There's the part number. And then we will continue on with this rehab.